Hey there, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is practice converting angles given in degrees to radians. Now, what we're going to do first is we are going to review some of the more common angle measures that you're going to run across and what they are equal to in radians. And then after that, I'm going to show you how you can use the angle measure that you want to convert to radians to set up a proportion to solve. And at the end, I'm going to show you a shortcut for converting degrees into radians. Okay, what we have here on the screen is a unit circle. And what we should have committed to memory is that if you start at zero degrees and you go halfway around your circle to 180 degrees, that would be equal to pi in terms of radians. So if you go all the way around the circle, which is basically two times 180, you would have two pi in terms of radians. Now let's say you go halfway to 180 degrees, which is 90 degrees. Well, you went halfway to pi in radians, so in terms of radians, 90 degrees would be one half pi or pi divided by two. So let's say you go back to zero degrees and you count by every 90 degrees. For every 90 degrees you count, you would count that as half of a pi. So this would be half of pi, two halves pi, and two halves is the same thing as one whole, three halves pi, and four halves pi. And four halves, or four over two, is equal to two. So we would express that as two pi. Now let's say we went halfway from zero to pi over two. Well, a half of a half is a quarter. So where the 45 degree angle is, which is half a 90 degrees, we could express that as one quarter pi or pi over four. So for every 45 degree angle, we can count by one quarter pi. So here we have one quarter pi, two quarters pi, and two quarters is the same thing as one half. Right here would be three quarters pi, so I can write three pi over four. And here would be 4 quarters pi, and 4 over 4 is the same thing as 1. Then right here, another 45 degree angle, we would have 5 quarters pi, so we can write 5 pi over 4. This would be 6 quarters pi, and 6 over 4 can be reduced to 3 over 2. And another 45 degree angle would give us 7 quarters pi. And if we go all the way around our circle, that would be 8 quarters, and 8 over 4 is equal to 2. Now let's say you have not committed to memory the conversion of some of these angles and degrees converted to radians. What you can do is set up a proportion that is the number of degrees that you are looking for to convert to radians, and you're going to put that over 180 degrees and you are going to set that equivalent to the number of radians over pi. Now, let's say, for example, you wanted to convert 180 degrees to radians. Well, what you would do is you would take the proportion that we set up here, and this is always going to be part of our proportion, 180 degrees. The denominator is always going to be pi, and what we're trying to do is convert two radians, and what we want to do is take our angle measurement that we want to convert. So let's just say it's 180. Now, because the top is the same as the bottom, that means on this side the top has to be the same as the bottom. So our answer would just be 1 pi, or just pi, if we were to convert 180 degrees to radians. Now, let's say we wanted to convert 360 degrees to radians. Well, because the top is double the bottom, that means this top should be double its bottom. So we would just write 2 pi, which is doubling pi. So 360 degrees in radians would be equal to 2 pi. Now let's say you wanted to convert 90 degrees to radians. Well, we can see that the numerator here is 
half of what's on the bottom. So whatever we write up here has to be half of this bottom. And remember, half of anything is just dividing it by 2. So we can take pi and divide it by 2. So 90 degrees when converted to radians is pi over 2, as we can see by our unit circle over here. But what we want to do in this problem is convert 320 degrees to radians. So let's go ahead and write 320 degrees right here. And we are trying to figure out what are the number of radians that that is equal to. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to change this into an equation through cross multiplication. So first, let's go ahead and multiply 180 by the number of radians. Remember, with proportions, you have to solve by cross multiplication. So we're going to do 180 times the number of radians equal to 320 degrees times pi. Now remember, we're trying to solve for radians, so we need to isolate this variable right here. So on the left-hand side of our equation, the number of radians is being multiplied by 180. So to isolate the r, what we have to do is take 180 and divide it by itself on both sides of our equation. So on this side, 180 divided by itself is 1. So that leaves us with just 1r. And what we have to do now is just take 320 over 180 and simplify that. Now we can start by crossing out these zeros. And now we take 32 over 18 and simplify that further. Now those are both even numbers. So we can just cut both of those in half. And half of 32 is 16. But we have to leave pi in our numerator because the problem asks us to solve in terms of pi. And we cut the denominator in half, and half of 18 is 9. So we would say that 320 degrees in radians is equal to 16 pi over 9. So 320 degrees would be about right here. So in radians, that would be 16 pi over 9. All right, let's do another example. Okay, in this example, we have to convert 45 degrees to radians. Now, 45 degrees is just half of a right angle or half of 90 degrees. And because in radians, 90 degrees is pi over 2 or 1 half pi, what we have to do is take half of a half, which is a quarter. So we could say that in radians, 45 degrees is equal to 1 quarter pi, but we write it as pi over 4. Pi divided by 4 is the same thing as 1 fourth times pi. Now let's just verify this by using our equation here. So we're going to take 45 degrees and we always put that over 180 when doing our conversions. And on the other side, we always put the number of radians at the top. And on the bottom, we always put pi. OK, next we cross multiply 180 with the number of radians. So we're going to write 180r is equal to 45 times pi. And now we have to divide 180 by itself on the left. And we do the same thing on the right-hand side of our equation. And what we have to do next is just simplify 45 over 180. Now, I can see that 9 is a common factor to 45 and 180. So I'm going to divide 9 into 45, which is 5. And I'm going to divide 9 into 180, which is 20. And notice we can simplify that even further. 5 is exactly 1 fourth of 20, so we're going to go ahead and just write 1 fourth pi. 
which really is pi over 4. All right, let's do another example. Okay, so we have to write 225 over 180. Now, whenever you have a numerator that's bigger than the bottom, that just means you're going to have more than 1 pi. So that just means you're going to have either a whole number or an improper fraction at the end. So we have to set that equal to the number of radians over pi. Okay, now the first step is always the same. After setting up your proportion, it's just going to be 180 multiplied by the number of radians equal to whatever is diagonally located from pi. So in this case, 225 pi. Okay, next we divide the left-hand side by 180, and then we divide the right-hand side by 180. These cancel out, just leaving us with r equals 225 over 180. So we have to go ahead and simplify this. So I can see that this ends in a 5 and this ends in a 0, so they're both divisible by 5. There's probably something larger here, but I'm doing this mentally. So let's see what we come up with. Um, now, 5 goes into 225 45 times. And 5 goes into 180, a total of 36 times. So at this point, we have 45 pi over 36. Now, 45 and 36 are both divisible by 9. So 9 goes into 45 five times, and 9 goes into 36 four times. And we cannot simplify five quarters any further, so our final answer in radians is equal to 5 pi over 4. Now, there's even a quicker way that you can convert degrees into radians. Well, if you take a look at all the examples that we previously gave, all we really ended up doing was taking the number of degrees given that we have to convert and we ended up always dividing that by 180. And then after you take that fraction and write it in simplest form, you just end up multiplying that by pi. And that's what your answer is going to be in radians. So right off the bat, if you are given a number of degrees to convert to radians, write that number of degrees as your numerator and write 180 as a denominator. And then simplify that fraction, and then multiply that by pi. For example, we can take 225 180, and we can reduce that by a factor of 45 on the top and the bottom. And if we simplify by a factor of 45, the numerator we get is 5, and the denominator is 4. And we write pi at the top. Now, in our second example, we had to convert 45 degrees into radians. So all you really had to do with that example is take 45 and write that as your numerator and write 180 as your denominator. And then what you had to do is simplify that fraction and then just multiply that by pi to get your radians. And 45 goes into itself once and 45 goes into 180 four times. So we can write this as 1 fourth times pi, but writing that in simplest form would be pi over 4. So 45 degrees converted to radians is pi over 4. And for the first example, we had 320 degrees. So we would write that as our numerator over 180. And then we would simplify this fraction right here. So we can reduce first to 32 over 18. And that can be simplified further to 16 over 9. And we write pi along with our numerator. So 320 degrees converted to radians is 16 pi over 9. All right, so in review, when you have to convert degrees into radians, one way that you can accomplish this is by setting up a proportion and then setting up an equation from that given proportion. However, an easier way would be take the number of degrees that you have to convert to radians and write that as your numerator and always write that over 180 and then take the resulting fraction that you just formed and simplify that fraction 
and then write pi along with your numerator, and that's all there is to it. Hey, I just want to say thanks very much for checking out my math video. Please subscribe to my channel so when I upload new math videos, you can become informed as they become available.